I'm Adam Riley. I'm a reporter here at WGBH, and this is another iteration of our weekly scrum. We're now four weeks away from the Boston mayoral preliminary election. Uh, joined today by David Bernstein, Peter Kadzis, and Ann Mastu to talk about mayoral television ads. So let me just start by asking the three of you which ad uh, each of you likes best, which one you think is most effective, uh, and why. Um, and David, since I'm staring right at you, uh, you have uh, to go first. I'm not sure about most effective, but I really do like the Mike Ross ad where he's sort of running through the streets of uh, Boston. Uh, Wearing it, a, a Mike Messenger bag. It, exactly, or? and handing out uh, his plan uh, to people he passes on the street. It's sort of high energy, you know, it grabs your attention. Uh, it shows all the parts of Boston, and it, it's very well done. It grabs your attention, and he gets a chance to talk a little bit about um, what he wants to do. And it's sort of his image of, I'm going to be the youthful new energy to, to City Hall. So I thought it was pretty effective. And in addition, he, uh, he references Tom Menino and getting some advice from Tom Menino at the outset, making it seem like he's got Menino's endorsement right. or approval, even if he may not. Actually, when I decided to run for mayor, Mayor Menino told me to take it to the street. So? All right, Peter and Ann, are you two as um, smitten with the raw spot as David is? Um, I think the raw spot's really good. It's, it's the most fun. I'm not sure it's the most effective. I think John Conley's um, sort of documentary, I Expose Bad Food in the School Department, ad is the most effective. And I wouldn't overlook District Attorney Dan Conley's most <laughs> recent ad. Um, I don't think it's aimed at people our age. It's aimed at older voters to remind them of what he's done. Um, it's not flashy, but in terms of effectiveness, I think it may do what he wants it to do. I would agree. I would say Dan Conley's ad is certainly establishes him as almost like Kennedy-esque figure. I do think Mike Ross's ad has the most energy. It's more fun. It's really interesting to me, too, to notice who's narrating these ads, whether it's the candidate, him, him or herself, or if it's a paid voice. Right, and voice that, of God type. Exactly, and that makes a big difference between the Mike Ross ad and the Dan Conley ad. They're just very different. See, it's interesting. Consalvo, who was in early, um, with a really fun ad and a real populist ad that has been sort of overshadowed by the Mike Ross ad. Do you know what the playground is? I, I, I don't recall All offhand, right. but it, it's down in Hyde Park. I, so, Peter, you think that, that uh, Ross has managed to steal Consalvo's young, youthful, vigorous thunder? Uh, your <laughs> my words, not yours, but yeah, for the moment, yeah. for the moment. Um, let's not forget, TV ads last in the memory for about two weeks, ten days. Um, this is really him introducing himself to all those people who don't know him. I, I would also point out that that really, because of what Peter said, and because of the amounts of money available to these candidates, it's really those last two or three weeks what they're running, uh, you know, after Labor Day that's going to matter. Some of what's been happening up to now, uh, you know, for instance, that three-pointer ad from Consalvo, he did run it on TV, but he didn't spend a lot of money on it. I think it was more sort of mm. to get some attention. You know, if you're trying to come from behind, again, Mike Ross sort of releasing this ad before we hit that three-week uh, window to get a little bit of attention where, for instance, Marty Walsh is in a little better position, isn't trying to, to get that kind of advantage, you know, attention getting. Right. I think it's important to notice, too, that they are showing themselves as healthy, youthful, active candidates. I think there's a definite message toward Menino's state right now. Mm. And oh, you think I, it's a backhanded swipe at Menino in both those ads? I don't necessarily think it's a backhanded swipe, but I think it's I think it's an effort to distinguish themselves as new and different. They know that politically they don't want to set themselves too far apart from Menino, but they want to make it clear that they are in great shape yeah. to run the city. Well, where I think Dan Conley may be trying to get more of an image of I'm the grown-up among this group, you know, I'm the sort of serious candidate, which may be why they he uses that voiceover. Um, and a little bit more sort of serious tone. Still photos as opposed to motion. Yeah, see, my view is these ads are only as effective as the ground organization they have to back them up. These ads give people a sense of the flavor of the candidate's thinking. We haven't seen Marty Walsh in there. We also haven't seen anything negative right? yet. Right. Uh, one question about Consalvo and Ross, and then I want to talk about a couple others that we haven't gotten to yet. Do you think that Consalvo and Ross, as they try to show how energetic and youthful they are, are they targeting different constituencies with their ads, do you think? I, I, I do. I mean, I think that, that, I mean, there's obviously overlap with all these, these right. candidates. Right. Um, I think Ross is, is really trying to get um, people who are not, you know, we talked about Conley targeting the older folks who we know vote. 
Ross to, to get past the preliminary is going to get have to get younger voters, young right. professionals, uh, people. He needs to get people's attention. So something lively like this, lively is, in in a T-shirt with again the messenger bag as opposed and, to. Right, and, and Consalvo, I think, is trying to be the neighbor of guy and sort of yeah. the, the young, new ideas version of Tom Menino. See, Wall's act struck me. His ad reminded me of a Dukakis ad, mm -hmm. a Mike Dukakis How ad. so? Um, uh, High-minded, focused, purposeful, clean. Um, I agree, and I, th I thought his, I think his is very, very effective. But again, does it connect with anything else that people are hearing or seeing about him? Uh, or is it just sort of out there in the ether that, that doesn't connect to anything? And am I right that there's, is there any mention of the casino issue, which has become sort of Wall's mm. core issue in the race, at least at this point in time? I don't think he mentions that in the yeah. end, does he? Not I that I recall he does. No. No, I don't think so. I, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. No, this um, is enough. This is a broad appeal. Here's who I am. Here's so what I that. built. Yeah. And then at the end, he goes for, even though he's a little older than Consalvo and Ross, a little. Vigor himself, right? With you know, come on, Boston, Boston. let's think big. Let's think the exhortation. Big. What about Felix Arroyo, who's been up, I believe, with um, is it primarily Spanish language spots or only Spanish language spots? No se te olvida votar el Malta. I, I think up yeah. to now the only ones that have aired are Spanish language. I think that's right. I, I, that's right. I, I believe that he may have uh, put out some you know ads or videos. It's sometimes hard to tell what's meant to be a an ad and what's really just going to be circulating on the internet. But I think the only ones he's actually, he doesn't have that much money to play with, so he doesn't want to waste very much of it too early. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you two think of the Arroyo yeah, Go ahead. I, th I think they're effective. I mean, he's, he's, he's taking people throughout the city. They're speaking in Spanish. They're saying, me preocupes, what they're worried about. And then he's speaking in Spanish, talking about what he can do for the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, there's certainly a number of people who are going to, not understand what he's saying, but the people watching the channels will understand. Yeah, I don't understand what he's saying, but the ads visually are clean and very strong. To me, they suggest focus and vigor. Yep. And, and by the way, um, they actually, I think, dovetail pretty well with a series of public service announcement ads mm -hmm. that a group led by Oeste, uh has put together. Oweste, the Latino political organization. That's right. Wide and, and they've put together um, uh, these terrific ads that are running on the, the local Spanish language uh, um, uh, TV stations uh, that are that really a uh, you know participate. It's sort of my Boston is uh -huh. is you know my Boston is this you know I'm part of Boston, and and those are very effective. They're also you know really sort of targeted towards younger voters because that's you know that's where a lot of that demographic is, if you will. Um, so. That's really just to sort of boost up participation, which, right. as it happens, will be good for Felix Arroyo, presumably. You, and I think that his ads, you know, go well with you that. Said, Arroyo's ads are very Boston. That that shot yes. of the, the the young woman in the old state house yep. that says Boston to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, the, uh, I'm blank on his name, is it Carlos Arredondo, the man oh, who, right. who was a, a hero during the marathon bombings, wearing the Boston Strong t-shirt. He's also prominently featured. Uh, I think ahead. what's really interesting, too, is where they're choosing to place him. I mean, there are a number of candidates who are just doing videos on their websites and just, just YouTube ads, not doing any television. And then there are a number of people who've already done television. I think it's, you've got very different selective ways of viewing the ads. Right, right. And a lot of that is, is what they're trying to do with them. Um, some of that is not to necessarily win over broad votes, but to get those, those early supporters, you know, and, and to get them volunteering, get them active, or to get the ones who are uh, with the campaign sort of more active. You know, I think that, that Consalvo one with him shooting the threes is a great example. It doesn't necessarily convince anyone, but those people yeah. who like him really, really like him. You know what I think the big jolt in that ad is, is when he really sells the ball fake. You know, so I actually knew about the ball fake before I watched the ad for the first time. I was told to look for it, and it still kind of made me flinch. He he uh, he put some muscle behind that. You He's know? a surprisingly good athlete. Uh, that's yeah. what I hear. Yeah. Uh, will there be any of these ads that we've seen so far that people will remember in say 30 or 35 years, the way people remember the Kevin White loner in love with the city ad from the 70s, or not? I don't think so. Nothing. No. Yeah. No. The, no. I think that that if there's going to be a memorable ad, it'll be later. It'll it'll be something that comes out towards the end. Anything in the works that we should be looking ahead to ads that haven't hit yet, but that you're hearing rumors about? Not Marty Walsh, anyone else? No? I'm waiting for someone to go negative. Yeah. Post prelim, That's, is that when that happens? Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, 
some of these folks can't wait that long. <laughs> you know, you 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 know, you got to try to get the get into the, the final two, and that may mean you know trying to knock somebody out of the top two. All right, guys. As always, thank you for uh, scrumming with us here today. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back again next week.